I'm at a weird point in life where a lot of the cliches that I learned growing up and that we all learned growing up are starting to be applied. And it's so weird. Like the one for this video, change is the only constant in life. And that little paradoxical phrase has been running through my mind for the past year. So when I'm recording this, it's the day before my birthday, but when I posted, I would be 23. Um, but I was reflecting over 22, like the whole day because I'm dramatic. And it was, I realized it was the most revealing and eye-opening year I've had. Like I've learned a lot of cruel, you know, facts of life. I've learned a lot of wonderful facts of life. I've experienced a lot more. I've healed in ways I didn't know I even had to heal. I accessed parts of myself I didn't think one were there or two it was necessary. So I wanted to just share some of that because once I started to grasp these principles, it kind of helped put the rest of my life in perspective. So this year was the first like year of my life I have not ran track since I was 10. And that at the beginning was hard because not only is are you just like surrendering something you've done for over a decade of your life, and I've only been alive for like two of them, you know what I'm saying? So over a decade of your life, but there are so many other things that came with it, so many other struggles that I didn't necessarily count for. I had to learn how to eat again. I had to learn how to have a better relationship with my body, have a better relationship with my brain, because it was just things like, you know, when you're a D1 athlete, and really just an athlete in general, you have to make all these sacrifices that put your body on the line, they put your sanity on the line, you know, they put your relationships on the line. And it got to a point where it was just too much and I had to go. But in me choosing myself in that moment, it felt like I surrendered an entire identity. And like, I had no idea who I was for the, I don't want to say the first time because if I'm being frank, I've always been searching as we all are, but I had no basis for identity anymore, or at least that's what it felt like. And then I had a relationship end, a relationship I thought would last forever. And, you know, and that had a lot of pain in it. Just all these different changes and the healing that had to come from that of like my self-worth. And again, like having to learn to love my body, my spirit, my soul, having to learn how to work in my brain. I remember one day I reached a point where I was so unstable that I was like, okay, I'm either gonna do it or I'm not. So we need to get, we need to figure out what's going on here. And it was just me having this conversation with myself, this really open conversation with myself and being and weighing the pros and cons. And it was really weird because I wasn't weighing pros and cons of whether something would go good or bad. I was weighing pros and cons on life and death. And I chose in that moment, I was like, you know what, no, like that is off the table. So now that's off the table, what am I going to do? And it was from there that I finally started learning things. And I finally started understanding things. Another thing I learned is that two opposing viewpoints can both be correct. Like, I am a very, I'm not even gonna lie, I'm a very prideful person. And usually I will argue a point down because in my brain, I know that it's right. And I'm right. And then that's when I learned that boundaries and compromise, that's where those come in. And me being a people pleaser my whole life, that was really hard for me to put in place because with that, that obviously comes with displeasing people. Then I asked like, is people's perception of me being positive more important than me feeling good about myself and me feeling good about what I'm doing? And you know, obviously like the answer is no. <laughs> um, and so I set those boundaries and <clears throat> you know, some people stayed, some people left, but I could have peace knowing that in that moment I chose to do what I truly felt was the correct thing to do. And I defended something that I truly felt was correct. And finally, I learned like, I need to stop taking everything so personally because it doesn't matter that much to the other person. Like most of the time people are not going out of their way to like destroy you or to offend you. Everybody is just trying to make it through their individual day, their individual journey. And even if someone is trying to personally attack you, who cares? I had to really ask myself that. 
who cares? Because if it's taking time to personally attack you and you literally have nothing to say back, this is obviously a one-sided interaction that you don't need to be a part of. But it took me so long to understand that because I either felt the need to push my point or I felt the need to take away the drama of the situation, completely de-escalate. Like I felt like it was my responsibility to do that. You are allowed to choose your battles. You're allowed to choose to not fight. And that is okay. And there's no explanation. And it does not make you weaker. It doesn't make your point any less valid. It just means you chose not to engage in something that you simply were not interested in, period. I hope that helped quiet your mind a little bit. And I hope that helped make sense of some of your situations. Um, you know, take what resonates. Thanks so much for watching and have a great, great, great rest of your day.